Alrighty, and you are listening to the United We Strike Radio Marathon for January 2014. Um, next up on my uh, parade of extraordinary guests this evening is uh, Vinny Eastwood and Suzanne Pozell. So if you will please stand by. I'm actually going to, you know, just for giggles, uh, Vinny Eastwood sent me a tune that I understand his band uh, put together. He sent this to me last month, and I'm going to go ahead and play this as the uh, lead-in to, to their presentation. Stand by for just a moment. I'll be making the Skype call as soon as I get this tune played out here. Ooh, in the summertime, in the city, when the girls are all so pretty, in the summer, in the city, when the girls are so pretty, I feel like I'm walking on the clouds. When the sun shines down, in the summer, in the city, when the girls are looking so pretty, with all those nice fresh fruits and vegetables, tended by vendors on the side of the street, making a living in the summer. Summer in the City, Vinnie Eastwood and uh, and his band performed that. And now uh, we're going to bring them live. I managed to connect with both. Every once in a while, Vinnie gets a little flaky on us, but this time he's actually shown up and he's going to be here live for this presentation. So, folks, take it away. It's all yours. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just thought I'd open with, uh, with your particular... <coughs> Uh, customary opening response. Hello, everyone, and it's it's quite it, it's quite awesome when um Suzanne Pos if it was actually Suzanne Posel's show and they've got like the heavy rock music kind of leading into the door. Oh, no, 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 no. Hello, everyone. You know, it's, it's, it's this wonderful juxtaposition. Um, yeah, Christmas is over, the new year has begun, and uh, boy, what a year it's going to be. Uh, especially with the launch of the U.S. Independent, isn't it? Oh right? yes. Yes. Oh, please. The US Independent dot com. This is the new standard in media. I brought together a group of professionals and a group of people who are doing wonderful works, who are exposing lots of scumbaggery. There's radio shows, there's op-ed pieces, there's medical doctors, attorneys, um, journalists who were fired from mainstream media who still want a voice, so I gave them one on the U.S. Independent. Charlotte Iserby is also a contributor. Uh, Dane Wigington is going to start contributing as well, and I just secured a former CBS reporter who is exposing foreclosures with his camera and going to the courthouse and doing a lot of uh, guerrilla media. So he's going to be doing a one uh, uh, broadcast per week on a special report on our on our network, um, the usindependent.com. Please come, tell your friends all about it. Um, I'm excited. Vinny is part of it. I, uh, I'm just excited. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it was on. Um, what was it? The fifty thousandth, the world's fifty thousandth most popular site before even being launched. Yes, and we we have readers from all across the world. In fact, today I was I was checking the stats, and we're worldwide. Everyone in in all the major countries are on the U.S. Independent. Now I don't know if we want to really talk about this, but in terms of 
the reason why it's absolutely a necessity to launch such a thing. Um, other people might be saying, oh, there's, there's, there's real journalism and the truth movement already. What are you talking about? Um, uh, you know, to a, to a large degree, there, there really isn't. I, I don't know how this happened. Uh, people went from their slave jobs into the truth movement and they took their slave mentality with them in a lot of cases and to believe that you're credible means that almost everything that you well pretty much everything that you say has to absolutely stack up and if we're being honest with ourselves in the movement a lot of the things we say and do simply don't stack up do they well, that's why I decided to start this. It, the U.S. Independent is, is phase one of a project that I'm putting together um, because there needs to be integral journalistic standards in journalism, in, in media in general. The mainstream media has been compromised, but there are a lot of good people who aren't given a voice because their editors or the, the uppers don't want the story reported. So there has to be a place that adheres to credible uh, journalistic integrity, bringing factual information. We also have an op-ed section, which is fine. If you, if you have an opinion, your voice should be heard. And, and on that uh, section, we have a lot of people giving just their pure opinion. Um, but there has to be journalistic integrity. And I've always held myself to that standard. Uh, my training is in, in paralegal studies. And so I learned very quickly As that opposed it's not... To as opposed to paranormal studies. Exactly. Well, it's a little freaky, I'll tell you. But I learned quickly that it's not what, you, what happened, it's what you can prove. And so conjecture mixed with facts turns into uh, fear porn. And we see that rampant all over independent and alternative media. What I'm trying to do is bring the facts and separate the opinions from the facts and so we can make informed decisions about our world. Because if we have erroneous information or we have opinionated information that's loosely based on facts, then we're not going to be able to make proper decisions that benefit ourselves and our community and our world at large. So I'm bringing factual information so that we can make informed decisions, so that we can turn this whole thing around. <laughs> the undumbing of the world. <laughs> and... It takes personality as well to, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, attach itself to credibility. I mean, y your personality and your credibility uh, become one and the same uh, after a while, I think. Um, and in some cases, it goes in the in the opposite direction, where you believe just because you've got a personality that everything you say has credibility, when that's not the case at all. Um, and this comes off the back of uh, two recent um, uh, uh, very public splits from uh, alternative media entities. I think it was uh, Roxy Lopez just split from Revolution Radio and wrote a enormous, um, uh, like, like virtual dossier on, on how bad it was there uh, and, and, and things of that nature. And there was also, uh, what was her name, Sonia something from um, the Sarah David Bolton. Ike's. Yeah, 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 sorry. And uh, splitting from the People's Voice uh, run by David Ike, claiming that it was uh, kind of uh, untransparent, that they were uh, milking all the volunteers and so on and so forth. Now, is this a measure of the level of integrity, both in the operation that you run and in the people you include within it? I think it is commentary on these uh, symptoms that are masking a huge problem in alternative media. And it's because there is no integrity, there's no standards by which uh, people are judged and upheld to. So the integrity is whatever people say it is. And because there are no standards, you can say whatever you want about yourself and you're not upheld to anything. You don't have to prove yourself to that standard, so people just take your word for it. And I think it's evidenced in the things that we're seeing now uh, with Roxy and, and with Miss Poulton that 
um, there are some major things going on in the background of alternative media that uh, we need to address or we need to step away and this, that's what I've done with the US Independent. I've decided that uh, it's, it's very sick over there and there's a lot of cancer going on and I've decided that I'm going to pick up my toys and go play in another sandbox. Yes, and also myself, um, and not not via choice, but via lack of options. I am no longer with American Freedom Radio, um, and it's not because they were uh, uh, doing anything wrong per se. It's just you know the network was just falling apart. Uh, people were people were leaving, not doing the work, and and now it's it's now it's uncontactable and. Um, the credibility of the network owner, uh, Danny Romero, uh, throughout the years has been absolute tops. And uh, I think it's in that kind of spirit, who, he who gave me uh, my radio broadcast in the first place, imposed on me one rule, have fun. And I think it's in that spirit that I just simply, I'm continuing to do my radio show. In fact, I pioneered uh, my first three-hour radio broadcast the other day interviewing uh, a man named Thunder and uh, Brad Molner, who, in my opinion, are the, <coughs> the Tesla and Hippocrates of our times. It was, it was an extraordinary interview that I just had to, had to do an extra hour with them. And uh, when we step away, that's when we start to see things a little more clearly. That's when we start to establish our real independence. Independence means not being dependent. And if there's one problem with the United States, it's that it's completely dependent. Hence the need for the U.S. independent, isn't it? Unfortunately, that's true. I, I have to say that that is. It's a mentality that starts with the idea that, hey, I paid into the system. I'm having a rough time. I uh, should get something out of it. I'm only going to use it for a little bit. Um, there's a mindset in this country that we don't understand what our value is, what our worth is, what our personal value is. And so I've discovered that I have a, an incredible value and that I provide an incredible service. And that is not something that is subject to anyone or anything. It never has been. I've walked away from everyone. In fact, my husband and I were laughing. And he said, you know, you've walked away from every uh, network. You told everybody no, so we're going to have to start our own. And I said, that, absolutely. Absolutely. Because there are, there are people out there that are doing good things that are, we're not listening to them. And the ones that we're listening to are selling us things and pitching us just like any used car salesman. And because we have that crowd mentality that is rampant in the United States, you know, thanks to Edward Bernays uh, studying Gustave Le Bon and actually applying crowd psychology to the United States and it's upheld, you know, and been prosperous and, uh, for the last 80 years, because of that problem, um, we need something that is not structured to where people become rock stars, but that we together speak and encourage each other and inspire each other, show each other what we're worth and what our value is, and stand up for what is inherently ours. Mm. And stop the um, the infighting and the public mudslinging, I think, is, is, um, and I've engaged in it myself, I'll, I'll admit, um, and uh, back on the topic of uh, Danny Romero, he never makes any fights public, ever. He, he'll only talk about it. He'll only talk about it behind the scenes. The reason why is it looks like everybody's fractured and disjointed and disloyal and and uh, and uh, egotistical and 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 what have you. And it just puts the ordinary listener off. We've got to stop doing that kind of. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it. What is. What is it driven by? Is it driven by our feelings, by our ego, or 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 something even worse? Is it driven by malice? Is it driven by vengeance for all of these other people in the movement? I don't. Know. For me, for me, I've done a lot of growing up, and I did things publicly that I wish I hadn't done, and I apologize for causing. Uh, the drama and contributing to the drama because it's ineffectual and it's a big distraction and I apologize. 
but what I've learned from that is there are real bad guys out there, and I report on them every single day, and we need to stop focusing on each other and start focusing on the problems, the actual problems, the, the actual solutions to those problems. Realize that it's a hydra and we have to get to the heart of it. That if we concentrate on the symptoms, we're never going to get to the problem. You know, you could have cancer, but it looks like the flu, and you'll die of cancer. And if we believe that we have cancer, uh, there was a gentleman, there was a documentary I saw a couple of years ago, this doctor felt so bad because he was convinced that a patient of his had cancer. And the nurses were convinced that the man had cancer. And the, the man died of cancer. And when they did an autopsy, guess what? They found no cancer in his body. It was simply his belief and everyone around him influencing him that made him think that he had cancer and he died of something he didn't have. We are dying as a culture of something that we don't have. And it's simply because we are not aware of our own value and our own worth. Because when you know what you're worth, you're not going to put up with abuse on any level, personal or public. You're not going to put up with an abusive husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. You're not going to put up with an abusive uh, boss or an abusive um, senator or representative on state or federal level. You're not going to put up with it. And when we get back to that, and if we foster that within each other, we're going to make major, major changes in this world. Think of where we've come. We've come from a world where now women can vote. Now we see racial equality. It's not perfect, but we see it. And my mother remembers when there were two bathrooms, when there were two water fountains. That's just one generation away. My mother remembers when they were burning their bras. My mother remembers when women entered the workforce. And I know that there's a lot of controversy around the uh, politics of that and the purpose of that. But the, f but the point is, is that people understand what they're worth, then they don't put up with people who don't treat them any uh, any less than what they know that they're worth. Well, when we are disenfranchised friend. is when we get up and we start screaming at people and begging for our rights. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing protest after protest of people who don't know what they're worth begging someone else to give them back what they already have. Mm. Now, it's on the points that we agree that we should come together and collaborate. And on the points that we disagree, we can possibly leave those for another time, preferably a time when we're not under the threat of an orderly extermination by a bunch of ruthless criminal sociopathic scumbaggery. Deal? Is that a deal, ladies and gentlemen? How about we stop infighting? And just start fighting back against the scumbags that assail us. And don't and don't give me any of that. Oh, you, what you resist persists. Really, that's like saying I'm going to pull the plug on somebody who's on life support because he's just resisting death. You know, it's it's just insane. And um, as you were speaking there about uh, women and the and the workforce and the uh, equality and the things that we have to do, uh, that we have to endure in order to start speaking out and what have you, my friend uh, Mikhail Bandmate, um, who helped me make that song that we started off with, of course, um, uh, handed me a DVD called North Country with uh, Charlize Theron. Have you ever seen of this movie? You, you will love it, Suzanne. You particularly will love it. At the end, you you will cry. I did. He did. Everywhere we and um, it's about uh, women working in the mines in uh, northern Minnesota in the uh, in the uh, in the eighties, and uh, the sexual harassment and and the uh, the abuse and the and the things that these um, that these women had to suffer was actually quite traumatic and horrific, and it happened in the early eighties, right? And they got a settlement from um, a class action lawsuit in nineteen ninety eight. However, despite the fact that they had to wait so long for their settlement, the fact that they had a class action lawsuit in the first place, and this is a real historical record, by the way, every other company pretty much in the United States and around the world got given this huge message by these women who were standing up who would not take no for an answer that you actually do need a code of conduct, that you do need sexual harassment policy. And it was only through suffering through enormous quantities of that and fighting for decades for equality that they not only got it for themselves, but they got it for everybody else. We're doing that for journalistic integrity, ladies and gentlemen, okay? There that has is, to be a standard to which we all adhere. That is exactly 
what I am doing with the U.S. Independent, and the people who are on the U.S. Independent were handpicked by me strategically. I got a lot of people who sent in uh, sub, um, submissions and people who are still sending submissions, and I encourage you to do that. OccupyCorporatism at gmail.com. Please send in a bio, headshot, and two sample works. Um, but we are holding everyone to a higher journalistic integrity, the same integrity that people who go to journalism school have to adhere to. Now, I understand that there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, indoctrination in our schools, but... Like Vinny pointed out, there is an, a standard by which journalism is supposed to be um, adhered to and disseminated for the public. And if the rules and regulations are upheld, then everything is smooth. Everything works perfectly, and everyone gets everything that they need. The mm. consumer gets exactly what they need. The producer gets exactly what they need. The writers get exactly what they need. And we can make informed decisions. When the whole system starts to break down, it's not that we have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We just have to start over. The model works. I'm just putting alternative content into the model. And the, the instant popularity of the website proves to me that this is something the people want. And so we're bringing more people on, we're, we're expanding, because if this is what people want, then this is what people should have. If it's what they need, um, because, and again, this comes down to another element, how many of our thoughts are truly our own? And how many are simply social engineering that we're only aware of at some kind of unconscious level? And I believe that we are living in a controlled society. Not, not only is, are our minds controlled to a large degree, whether that be by uh, the influence of our diet or the uh, toxicity in the air with the chemtrails and what have you, but if I may, the problem with our society is a lack of community. We're not coming together anymore. We are started to retreat into the suburbs many, many decades ago, started to stop knowing our neighbors' names. And I believe, as I've said on my broadcast a number of times, that community for the body is like vitamin C. It is absolutely essential. You cannot produce it by yourself. And today, we suffer from a form of community scurvy. Heck, we're suffering from journalistic scurvy, are we not? Unfortunately, we are. Um, and that's why what I'm doing and what everyone else on the U.S. Independent is doing is so necessary. We need to understand that evidence is evidence and facts are facts and if we understand what the facts are then the scary part of the story becomes an inspiration to do better and so we can tell corporations that we're not going to buy their products because they have GMO now I know that it's not all-encompassing Honey Nut Cheerios still has GMO but it's a step toward uh, this 15 year old girl ladies and gentlemen learned about the flame retardant in her Gatorade and wrote to Pepsi and started a petition and got over a hundred and fifty thousand signatures and Pepsi removed the flame retardant from all of their drinks because of a 15 year old girl that is what we need to start paying attention to not just the bad things that are happening but the people who are actually changing our world and if they happen to be 15 year olds then maybe the people who are 16 year old 16 years old and above should maybe look themselves in the mirror and say if a 15 year old can do that then what can i do yeah uh last night i was, I was up late editing as as i do trying to uh, get some videos up online for people that I interview. And uh, th this is my work. This is my magnum opus. This is my great work. I'm trying to help humanity. And uh, furthermore to doing that, I'm, I'm moving house and getting married. And uh, there was a, the, my Mrs. Car muffler split in half. It was expensive to fix. And I just realized I'm completely broke. Uh, so uh, 
for the first time in maybe, maybe a number of years, I sent an email out to my listeners. I don't send emails out right, generally. Um, but in this case, I made an exception because of my desperation. And just explaining people my situation, precisely what my costs and, and, and needs that uh, must be met. And overwhelmingly, the support comes in, right? However, there are a couple of responses that say this is the most disgusting email I've ever read. It's just truth is asking for money and uh, you should just go get a slave job. You're a piece of trash. You're a leech on society, this kind of thing. And uh, I, I don't understand that. Okay, you know, I spend all day, every day, pretty much every waking hour trying to expose scumbaggery and support the people who are doing it when I can't. Somehow, people think that that's evil, right? Supporting the scumbaggery system, having a slave job, never speaking up, never helping anybody, to them is perfectly justifiable. But for somebody who does it without actually getting paid and then asking for help when it's needed is somehow makes me just the worst person on earth. I don't understand that mentality. And here's why. I actually care about people. Mm-hmm. That's the main difference between me and a lot of others, is that I serve humanity, not myself. They serve themselves, not humanity. It's a service that some people take on and some people are handed. And the people who take it on do it for a reason that comes from their heart and their passion. And when it's handed to you, you learn to, uh, to have that passion. But people who do it innately, because it's what they know is right, uh, do it out of self-sacrifice. I work 24 hours a day, too. <laughs> There's always something in the news. And I had to put my radio show on hold to start the U.S. Independent. So... Um, Giving people the proper appreciation for the work that they do is not bad. Everybody gets up in the morning and goes to a job, and every two weeks you collect a paycheck. Well, in our line of work, nobody's paying us. So how are we going to live? If you exchange your value every single day, 9 to 5 or 11 to 7 or whatever, then what's any different than what we're doing? If anything... We work harder and accomplish more work. More work that is not only larger in scope and scale, but in value to the entire human race. Okay? Maybe these people are just jealous that we're doing something important for a species which they have forgotten about. Humanity. Hey, guys. It's coming up on short time got about a minute and a half here for a wrap-up want to make sure you do your blatant self promotions and uh, I have a certain amount of empathy with what you're talking about because uh, you know uh, I haven't had a slave job in 35 years but somehow I keep paying the bills <laughs> and it's all due to other people helping you and supporting you and uh, and being there when you need support the most and and this is the very epitome of of community. This is why humanity can survive and can thrive because we don't forget about each other and we do what is right regardless of how much it costs us personally and or professionally. I'm Vinnie Eastwood from the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. That's Vinnie with a Y because it's the most important question and Eastwood as in go ahead, make my news. And as I say, there's nothing shameful about shameless self-promotion. Suzanne? I'm Suzanne Posel. Uh, my website is OccupyCorporatism.com. Also visit TheUSIndependent.com. Vinny Eastwood is a part of it. And don't forget about RealGorillaMedia.com. It's alive and well, and there's a lot of great resources and wonderful people there, too. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Uh, now, are, are you are you two going to be available for roundtable? I'm going to play some tunes and then uh, bring everybody in for roundtable. How about uh, Suzanne? You said you were going to play. How about you, yeah. Benny? Are you up for it? Y yeah, I'm Kane, man. 
All right, sir. I'm going to take us out with uh, you know my favorite ode to the scumbaggery in uh, uh, in Washington D.C. It's a little ditty called uh, "Too Late to Apologize." 